Okay, I keep choosing the worst days to record on. It's very cold and very windy outside. <laughs> cold for Texans anyways. Um, it's like 40s-ish, pretty good wind outside too as well, but I'll do my best to try to keep the wind out of the mic. About the property, it's a 1975 house, so we should find some good stuff good stuff for any people that are interested in investors or buying older homes of what to look for so hopefully we find some good stuff all right let's go check it out also one more little coaching tip if you are starting your home inspection uh, company or you all right climbing up on this roof you can already see there's multiple layers to the roof and uh there's multiple roofing materials so we already know we need a roofer but let me show you what I found. You go, shingles are pretty brittle. Oop, there you go. And there's multiple layers to this roof. Look around the chimney, there's heavy, heavy tar, rust. Oh yeah, look at all that tar back there. It's always a good idea to uh, kind of bear your weight on the back of the chimney a bit and not fully commit to stopping around the chimney, looking for rot. Oh, here you go, right here. Oh, it's pretty solid, but you know it's leaking. So you can see uh, some heavy granule loss here. We'll write that up too. Got some lifting fla flashing here. Uh, so that's a weird install of the, the step flashing along the roof. It's lifting, they never knocked it back down. You got shingles falling out of place, improperly installed, old flashing, nails popping through, new shingles across the top. So prior repair comment gets dropped. Ooh, 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 there you go. Yeah, that's why you always wanna walk real slow. It's kind of sloppy there, but this is a heavy, water leak area and it's really rotted there. So when you see a roof like this, you always want to be really careful, be cautious of where you walk through. People will be like, oh, you're supposed to go in the attic first. Well, there is no attic there. So I'm not, I can't, I don't know. You know <laughs> so we still walk our roofs. You just don't want to go through it, you know? So just take your time, move real slowly. Don't run across the roofs. So here you go. If you wanted to, you could bring your ladder up here and uh, transition up to the top. We're actually gonna send the drone up and uh, look at that roofing material up there. Uh, but if you are really committed, you can bring your ladder up the side right here, stick another ladder up like that and uh, climb up to that roofing material. But uh, look at this, they had some gaps in the siding here and they try to foam it, but it's not fully foamed either. Let's see if it's showing up in the camera. Oh, here's another soft spot. So, soft spot right here. Got lots of soft spots there. Almost looks like some hail dinks in this area, but obviously this roof's not gonna qualify. <laughs> that would be a long shot to try to get this approved. approved. It's, this, this roof is at the end of its life obviously. Also, one more little coaching tip. If you are starting your home inspection in, uh, company or you are becoming a home inspector, one thing you want to know is never offer your opinion being like, oh my God, this is extreme or this is, this is terrible. You just say, hey, you need a new roof and it's going to be up to them if it's in their budget, if they can purchase a new roof or not. Um, yeah, you never know where people um, come from. You don't know if this is a castle to them. So you just bring them the facts and uh, you move on. Yeah, you can see Tyler over there. He almost, he saw it before I did. I'm over here talking to the camera and uh, he saw that spot What's before I did. <laughs> yeah, so he'll document the, the gap right there. And then, uh, um, yeah, so it just depends on what you wanna do. Tyler likes to fly the drone. He likes to take extra photos with the drone too because it helps out roofing contractors to give the client a better bid uh, and a better scope of what they're looking at. And yeah, you can see there's three or four different types of roofing material up here. So, oh, watch out. There's another spot over there too. It's kind of soft up in this area. Here you go. 
Tyler spotted this out, but there's no drip edge. And then they have weird plywood added in there. So obviously the decking's probably gone. Water's probably rolling back around here and getting in these gaps and getting in behind the house. So I don't know if we'll find anything with the infrared camera. It's really cold outside. So it's kind of a little bit harder to locate water with the infrared camera when it's cold. Okay, that's it with the roof. So I should have uh, some new roof content coming out. Uh, I should have some new roof content coming out. I should be able to get a roof replacement, maybe two roof replacements here in the future. And, uh, oh, and I had a backup at my house and I have old cast iron on my house. I should be able to document uh, a cast iron replacement on one side of the house. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you can catch those videos. All right, so um, working our way around the exterior, uh, we'll start from the top and work our way down. So um, from the roof, you can see some of the shingles on the edge being damaged and then work your way down from there. No drip edge flashing. Um, then moving on to the siding, we got some pieces over here that are lifting. They've done some repairs and replaced it with some fiber cement board, but either the boards were warped or they didn't fasten them down correctly. Um, then coming down to this window, um, this is what we would call inspector to inspector, um, some janky flashing work here, but uh, obviously that's not how we're gonna document it, but we have some gaps in between here. Um, and then going on to the base of this window, we got what looks like uh, maybe a brick was missing on one side, so they figured they moved down to the next side and uh, remove it over there just so it stays symmetrical. But you can see they filled it in with foam um, down here as well. And then in terms of the drainage, just overall in this area, um, it is starting to favor back towards the house. So we're gonna recommend the client monitor the area for pooling water. It has been raining here quite a bit. Um, no standing water right now, but the ground is favoring towards the house. So they'll wanna keep an eye on that. All right, coming back here, you can see that we're missing some fasteners and they're using screws. It's actually recommended to use nails or required to use nails in this scenario. And they, they're missing a lot of screws or uh, nails in the brackets. And you can see we're missing a whole lot from this plate here. And you can see this top plate here is actually shifting off to the side. So not properly installed. Also, you need some conduit for the, the wire here. You wanna pretty much think you need conduit where anywhere you can just reach and grab a wire. It is required to have conduit on the exterior for electrical wiring. Here you go, there's some more evidence of some water leaks around the roofing material. And then coming in through here, see some more soffit damage in these locations. Here we go, we have some tape flashing in the area. This goes with uh, some janky flashing like Tyler said. And then you have several different siding transitions here, but you could actually see, let me grab my laser pointer here. You could actually see this siding is sitting over this siding. So if this wall is shedding water, water's just gonna make it behind this siding here. So it's not properly installed. Very good chance that there is water getting behind that wall right there. And you wanna think of siding being installed in a shingle-like fashion. It's supposed to shed water and uh, that's not going to shed water properly. So we wanna inform our client about that. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> this is a good one. So we have a uh, some flashing lifting on the edge here for transition. So we're gonna have to look for water in this location. This is why you always don't go with looks. Tyler was correcting me. I said it looked newer. And you can see the uh, HVAC is a 2006 and it's actually using the R22 Freon here. So we actually have pre-written comments for R22 or older HVAC systems that are pre-written. And we sell those comments on homeiw.com and it helps better inform the client that the Freon is older and we do not use that anymore and if a technician comes out to work on this unit there's a very good chance they're going to try to upsell them with purchasing a new hvac system or they're going to charge out the nose to recharge it the fence is actually not required to be written up by trek because it's not part of the property 
but we actually have a section in our report to document the fence and just let the client know that it's in poor condition. There you go, this is a fun box. Got rust and corrosion. And uh, we started using these power drills a while back and they work most of the time, just, just not this time. All right, open up the panel. We don't record too many of these on the channel. I'm not sure why, but uh, you can see that we have aluminum wiring here. So we do write that up to let the client know. And uh, we have a double tap breaker here. The box is obviously corroded and rusted through. And um, <laughs> they actually have antioxidant gel on the main feeds, which is pretty impressive. So it's an older panel. We are we found enough to get an electrician out here again that is pretty much just a that is a limited look when, when, when it comes to looking at a panel box but remember as a home inspector we're not licensed electricians we know enough to be dangerous and get the real professional the real electrician out here to tell you exactly everything that's going on we know that there's aluminum wiring it's not installed 100 percent correctly and the box is letting water in and it's damaged so they want to be educated on how much it's going to cost to fix and that there's aluminum wiring in place and we have a pre-written comment for aluminum wiring too uh, so it can help you stay out of trouble as a home inspector but also help better inform your clients of what aluminum wiring is and the action steps they need to take when they have aluminum wiring. Here's another spot on the outside. You can see that we have poor drainage along the property line right here. And then uh, you can see all these open weep holes here, but they locked in or filled up these weep holes only so that we know that the, the drainage in this part of the property is gonna be written up as poor We'll highlight it for them to let them know that water is making it into the property over here. They're just filling up these holes to help mitigate it. And that will only go so far. That's not going to prevent it 100%. And we also noticed that there was some water stains in the baseboard inside here. So water's probably filling up through here and making it into the structure here where you have like this wood to ground content co contact over here. All right, so we have a 2006 water heater, uh, tip pressure relief valve terminating in the garage. You have dissimilar metals at the top and there is no manual disconnect. So all pretty common finds, unfortunately, <laughs> for an older property. But the biggest thing is, is we wanna let our client know that this is from 2006. So this water heater is getting close to approaching the end of its life. Another spot you hear me talking about all the time, but if you have uh, these prior, these drill holes here, if you're new to the channel or not, if you see these drill holes, this is consistent with a previous termite treatment. So always try to get the paperwork or let your client know to get a hold of the paperwork if you see these drill holes in the property. That one looks really old. Uh, those drill holes look very, very old. So they're probably not gonna have the paperwork, but it's good information to let them know that there's been a prior treatment on the property. I think as a Trek inspector, you're not required. You're not, not, I, not, I think I know. You're not required to write that up at, at all. This is uh, mainly just informative only about the, uh, the drill holes outside. But if you are licensed with the Texas Department of Agriculture, and we are, we're licensed termite inspectors, but we can actually treat two as well, but small rant. We are required to write those up to let them know that there has been some sort of prior treatment and we put that in our termite report outside of the report but we also put it in our home inspection report too when you're in the washer dryer area make sure you always look behind the washer and look at these uh connections you can see this connection is like impossible to get to to turn on and off and then you can also find a lot of damage behind these washer and dryers remember most of the problems that you're always going to find isn't going to be where you normally just can see it you have to it's normally going to be behind something so you always want to just kind of add it in your routine to be looking behind things open up little cubby holes and looking in those connection areas because that's where a majority of your major problems can be found i know as a home inspector we're limited at what we can do but we try to maximize the things that we can find in the limited time that we're here in the limited and with all the regulations that are on us too as well but we try to do our best to find everything all right tyler and i are headed to the attic space 
I mean, we write up almost every single attic ladder. All the, there's a, they always have loose connections. They're not insulated and they don't close properly, especially in older homes. So um, just get used to dropping those comments. So you can see here, there's not always proper decking or proper pathing. So if you want to become a home inspector and be in the home inspector trade, make sure that you are agile and nimble because we have to crawl, climb, and stand in awkward positions all the time and not fall through roofs if that is, or ceilings, let's go with ceilings if that is possible. So just a, a kind of a look at how Tyler operates. All right, so the uh, primary drain line is not fully insulated here. You can see it stops short on there. It's also not covering up at the top very well. Um, they attempted to do a secondary drain line, but it's just an elbow coming off that's capped off at the top. It's not going to make its way into the pan here. Um, nice thing, they use some metal supports. A lot of times we run across wood supporting the uh, units in the pan, which you don't want. Um, and for the heating side, there is no service disconnect. So just like on your um, water heater in the garage and your electrical equipment, you do want a service disconnect servicing that. This is a common write up too, where you can see some, um, the duct work running across the, the, the flooring here. It's not lifted or supported properly. And then also where the duct work is touching that allows condensation and condensation actually rolls across the ducts and creates water stains in your ceiling. That happens a lot in uh, Houston, Texas because it's so humid and hot here during the summer months and the, our air is so cold in the attic space. Here you go, this uh, stairwell isn't up to par by any means. You can see the, the riser and the, uh, the tread lengths are not proper when it comes to the stairs and also the handrail isn't the proper height and then also uh, too big of openings. The spindles are too big of openings and the handrail is loose over here. Oh, just missed the step. <laughs> um, a common question we'll get is be like, well, are the sellers going to do anything? One thing you need to know about a home inspection, no one is required to do anything at all. This is purely for the buyer's information. They can negotiate it on it if they want, but the seller can easily come back and say, no, I'm not going to fix those stairs. And they're not required to fix those stairs to sell the property. So all of this information that I'm calling out is pure information just for the buyers. They can determine if they want to purchase the property or this house is within their tolerances. Um, but you never know, you know, some people don't want anything wrong with the property and some people just don't care. They just glad to know that they have issues and they're going to solve them whenever they get here. Okay. This is a, uh, unique shower. <laughs> so it looks like they grabbed a whole bunch of, I guess, leftover material and built a shower here. But our biggest concern is the shower pan, you know, do, we need to make sure that this, uh, well, this shower is holding water properly. It's not really getting behind the walls. And the best way we do that is uh, block the drain and we put about an inch of water in it and we let it sit for a minute. And then uh, we test it with the infrared cameras and moisture meters around it. The, this is extremely important because you shower, most people shower every day or every other day, right? And uh, um, if uh, it is leaking behind the wall, this can cause all kinds of issues to the property. It can cause mold, water damage, you know, mold, health problems over a long period of time. So by us doing this test here, it can save our clients thousands of dollars because redoing a shower like this, minimum, most people charge $2,000 to do a basic fitting when it comes to shower. It won't be anything fancy, but it can cost a lot of money to uh, fix this. Another thing you want to do too with the shower head, let me get it in there, is you want to point it at a transition point into the wall. You're trying to put it the shower under stress and then make sure you don't, with the shower pan stopper like that or a shower stopper, don't walk too far away from the room because you'll go through like start checking outlets and stuff and the next thing you know you flood the bathroom. So just 
wait for about an inch of water to get in there, make you maybe write your report a little bit as you do it, uh, just to save you a little bit of heartache. Rule number one when it comes to home inspector home inspections is don't leave a room with water running. And if you have if you're a home inspector and you weren't trained, you probably already know that. And if you were trained, you probably made the mistake anyways. And <laughs> we've all done it. Um, so you, I'm just trying to save you money. Just don't don't do that. Here's the other side of the shower. Not really seeing any water leaks there. It's a long shot. You're not typically going to see through any wood or cabinet, but it's it's definitely worth looking into with the camera. We have a little bit of discoloration. Oh, come on. The camera adjusts off of it a little bit, but a little bit of discoloration there, but we'll hit it with the moisture meter and see what we got. And we have a little bit of blue back there in the corner too. So we'll hit that with the moisture meter. No. Yeah, they just, they must have recently patched there. You can see the elevation and the reading, but it's not enough to say active moisture, especially after running all that shower. And then we had a little bit of, oh, I think that's just wood in the in there. So you're gonna pick up something, but you're not gonna pick up moisture off of that wood panel. We'd have to open up that. And it looks like it's nailed or screwed closed. Yeah, see they, uh, they painted over the screws. I would actually, if I had the opportunity, I would take these screws out, but they nailed it too. It's kind of a tough call as a home inspector because then we'd be intrusive and there's a possibility we could damage the property. So can't get back there, unfortunately. I would like to, but I'm putting it back and then the seller could complain and actually even report us to Trek if they wanted to uh, for damaging and doing intrusive testing on the property. One more thing to hit uh, with outlets and whatnot, whenever we have aluminum wiring, you want to take the infrared camera and scan over all the outlets and switches. The ones that are overheating in the camera, those are the ones you want to open up. That's where you can typically find uh, the problem area on, on the property. Okay, we're going to wrap the video up there. One thing you want to keep in mind whenever you are inspecting, I know I said this already at the beginning of the video, is uh, you don't know where people came from. So you don't know if this house is a castle to them. Your job is to just present the facts and let them decide if this house is within their tolerances. Um, on the way out, I always like to do a positive note about the property. You can always find something prop positive about this structure. And uh, the positive thing is, is there's no real signs of foundation issues. So I will go a list of all the problem areas and then I'll give them a list of good things. And the good thing is, is there's no foundation evidence. So that can save them money if they're thinking about flipping or living in the property too. But you know, that can cost a lot of money. They need a new roof. They have possible water heater change in the future and a possible HVAC change in the future, aluminum wiring. So this one could be a doozy for someone on a limited budget. So we just always want to inform them about all the facts and then let them make the decision. So that's Chris with Day Action. If you like this type of content, please hit the like and subscribe button and catch us on the next one. Thanks guys. Bye.